Hi everybody and welcome to Only Cool Stuff. My name is Zahir and here is my lovely wife Rebecca at the till. Uh, it's a very grey and wet Friday afternoon today. Um, not much happening in the shop but fear not I've got something a little bit different to my normal videos. It's been quite a while since I've done one of these. I've actually gone out and sourced some stuff for eBay so let me just show you uh, what I've picked up and what I hope to sell it for. As is often the case when you're outsourcing for stock for eBay, it can be quite a random selection of items and I've got to say today is no different. I'm pretty pleased with what I've picked up and um, I'll share, share with you um, those items now. Um, I'll start off with the smaller items because I can do those seated and then there's a couple of larger items that I'm going to have to gap and just film and show you. Uh, first item I want to show you guys and um, something that is worth looking out for um, are obviously Typewriters, um, especially the more vintage ones, certain brands are definitely more desirable than others and typewriters are like a sore subject for me because a few years ago, like I think this was probably back in 2016 or 2017, it was, it was originally when I first started reselling on eBay for profit um, back down south, I remember picking up um, a, a Hermes brand typewriter actually it was called Hermes it was nothing to do with Hermes itself but I think it was called Hermes and I remember paying a tenner for it and then going home and researching it and finding out it was selling for like 200 odd pounds it was such a, a such an immense feeling at the time it was one of my first big finds and then I remember getting it ready to photograph um, and then dropping it on the floor completely denting and smashing the the carriage and everything um, my heart sank and in the end I sold what could have been a £200 item for about 35 quid because someone wanted it as a uh, like a little display piece as part of their wedding uh, because it was so beautiful it was a beautiful typewriter and you know on, on like a display it would still look perfect obviously it just wasn't functional anymore um, anyway <laughs> gone off a bit of, a bit of a tangent there but I just wanted to share with you why typewriters are a bit of a sore subject for me uh, but I'm I'm over it I think six seven years later I think I can forgive myself um, and I've picked up this Olivetti uh, Letera 32 a nice little typewriter um, the case has seen better days the zip has um, actually come away a little bit from the case but the typewriter the carriage itself look in good order and the last one of these that sold online uh, on eBay was for £50 so that's a pretty good pickup. Next item nice and compact absolutely love picking these up 35mm cameras um, everyone knows about a certain brands such as the Olympus uh, Mu2 and the Mu and the, the Yashica series etc. Uh, this is the Olympus AF1 um, it pays to kind of have an idea like why something is worth a lot of money um, and you know there, there's certain cameras that have kind of got cult status the Mu2 being one of those uh, because it, it has a very crisp lens for a point and shoot camera it's a very nice lens um, and it's a similar story with this camera it's not quite quite as highly regarded um, the Mu's are now pushing like two three hundred pounds um, whereas this thing here um, is gonna sell probably for between 60 pounds 50 to 60 pounds perhaps um, so it's in good condition it's uh, called the Olympus AF1 and it has got an f2.8 lens so that is good and it is a fixed lens so often you'll find it's the fixed lens cameras with the low f-stops that are going to bring the big money so f2.8 is pretty good for a uh, well, I think it's as good as you can pretty much get for a point and click I'm pretty sure there may be some which have a lower one but I have not seen them um, and it's the fixed fixed lens that, that, that are worth more because they actually produce a sharper picture um, than a zoom lens would um, and the same applies when you're buying camera gear now like when I look for camera lenses for my camera um, the fixed lenses of the prime lenses uh, are much faster they're sharper um, and that's something you get because they're simpler design compared to a zoom lens so it's just like a trade-off I think um, I'm not like a photography expert obviously but that's the knowledge I have on it um, and it's um, helped me okay so uh, yeah that was a nice little pickup another item I was a little bit hesitant about picking this up because it's a battery um, but um, I couldn't leave it behind um, it is this is actually a pure official pure um, charge pack 
Um, now these are used in a variety of pure DAB radios. So uh, whether you've got an Evoke, um, the, I think it's the Evoke Flow, the Mio, the Sensia, the Verona, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, and, and these batteries uh, do command a good amount of money. Um, I should, because this is brand new and sealed, I have seen completed on eBay, should get me around 20 to 25 pounds for that, which is a really great return. So uh, definitely look out for stuff like that. Official pure batteries, pure charge packs are worth, uh, worth picking up. This is probably my most regrettable buy. So you, when you're outsourcing, you're always going to make the odd decision that you're perhaps not totally happy with. So Mercedes-Benz C-Class owner's manual and gump from 93. Um, I have seen some owner's manuals pick up some good money and I have seen this one get about 20, 25 pounds, but after buying it, I thought to myself, yes, but how long is it going to take to sell? I'm really focused on all of my uh, used eBay stock to turn over quickly, ideally within uh, like a 30 to 60 day period. And I don't know if this is going to cut the, or you know, cut the uh, mustard in that regard. So not sure about this, but they can be worth some good money. Some users' manuals can be worth a fair amount of money. Definitely worth researching those. So, um, so users' manuals, owners' manuals, whatever you want to call them. So this is like a 1993 one for a Mercedes uh, C-Class so uh, and it comes in its little book and it's got a whole bunch of other paperwork I'll make sure there's nothing private in terms of detail information in there um, and then I'll stick that on eBay um, if it doesn't sell quick I may auction it um, or I'll just get rid of it because I don't want stuff that's slow sticking around in the shop next item this was a no-brainer um, it's a Trudeau Spider-Man drinking cup flask thing this kind of item is weird because i saw it and it says year 2000 and it's hard to believe but yes that's like 22 years i mean that's ridiculous that that's 22 years old um just in my mind it's it still doesn't feel like that should be old but it is 22 years old unbelievable um it seems like yesterday was year 2000 but clearly not um, it's got a very grubby straw, I wouldn't use that straw, it's one of those flexi straws, but this kind of item is perfect for, for example, selling at the toy fairs um, and online as well. This will, will this will probably do well, it will either go at the toy fair at the weekend or it will go online and I don't know, I probably expect to get like a tenner out of it perhaps, um, because it is vintage, it's retro, nice little drinks cup, nice little figurine of Spider-Man on the top there. I'll do some more research on it because it could be worth more, but um, maybe a tenner, I reckon. Year 2000 Trudeau Spider-Man uh, cup. The final item I'm going to show you is also my bulkiest and biggest pickup of the day. So I'm going to have to just swing the camera around and show you what it is. I've always had a soft spot for hi-fi equipment, having worked, um, you know, at Dixon's for many years when I was was younger, and then spending a lot of time in Harrods uh, for quite a few years working in the hi-fi section there. Um, so I always have a soft spot for it. Uh, this kind of hi-fi is okay. Um, it's good profit. Um, it's definitely worth picking up at, at the right price. Um, but you know. I'll show you what it is and, and you guys can decide whether it's something you would bother with. So it's a Cambridge Audio A300 integrated amp. It's it's okay, it's entry level stuff that you'd pick up from like your richer sounds. It should resell for about £50 online plus shipping. A good profit in that for me so I'm always picking these types of items up as long as they're at the right price. Um, make sure it's just clean, in good condition. Uh, make sure there's nothing damaged on the back. Um, they often use, most hi-fis use like the IEC type kettle cable and then you can just see all the inputs there, they're all like in good condition, there's nothing like that's been tugged on, it's just been looked after nicely, so that was the first item. And along with it came this CD player, this is the D300 Special Edition, again it's not a spectacular CD player, it's an acceptable, it's a decent CD player. Um, what swung it for me is it was complete with a remote control as well. Um, so I should be able to get about 60 to 70 pounds for something like this. So again, some really good profit margins, um, you know, especially when you're used to dealing with like wholesale, etc. It's amazing what you can get on the used market. So this is some really good profit, uh, 60 to 70 quid. Now, something that you should never overlook when you're buying a hi-fi system is the interconnects. The interconnects can be often worth a fair amount of money. In this case, it's the low end. Whoever bought this system was obviously sold the, you know, the hi-fi 
they, they probably sold them the cable at the same time because it's Cambridge Audio, so it all matches. This is the Cambridge Audio Pacific um, Phono cables, RCA cables. Should be about a tenner plus shipping worth there. So it's a nice little add-on, um, you know, and uh, it shouldn't be overlooked when you're dealing with it. So that was pretty cool. Now, the final thing are these lovely modern short speakers. They're the MS, I think, 904s. Really nice condition. They sound fantastic for what they are. They're really decent. They've got spikes on them, so be very careful when handling them and putting them down on floors, carpets, etc. But these should fetch me about 100 quid online. And speakers are one of those things that look difficult, um, but really are not difficult to ship because they're such a simple shape. They're solid. As long as you use um, the right kind of, you know, right size of boxes, double box them, triple box them if you fancy, use loads of padding, they're going to be nice and safe and they will arrive in one piece. I've shipped um, really big, heavy speakers all across um, all across the world, actually, uh, thinking about it to China, Hungary, etc. And um, Touchwood had no issues. Um, so more than short, good brand to look out for. Um, so that's the final item. That was the haul that I picked up. I'm, I've already started to photograph it. I'm, I'm, I just need to make sure it gets up on to, online as quickly as possible because the whole idea with this is it's obviously a big part of our income. We need to make sure we have used products on there. But with running the shop as well, the wholesale, doing the toy fairs and the car boots, space is at our premium. So this stuff needs to shift. So I'm going to be pricing it um, and, and doing my best I can with the listings to try to get it to sell as quickly as possible. Um, but yeah, really uh, profitable day out. Um, always brings a smile to my face when you get a nice uh, bunch of goodies like that. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the haul video. Uh, it's been a long time since I've done one, it feels like anyway. Uh, let me know what you thought of what I picked up. If you've got any questions about what I picked up, let me know um, and I'll see if I can answer those. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.